Hey everybody, welcome back to The Practice, that time in the middle of the week where we gather with our small groups so that we can talk about what God is teaching us, take it a little bit deeper, and put it into practice. practice. That's right. But before we get into our lesson for this week, I want to say, wasn't Mother's Day awesome? Mother's I was Day so was grateful for all the attention that the moms got yesterday. Yeah. And uh, if you weren't able to be there, you can actually go back and watch the video. Stacy Siever did a great job. She did. And really Jay cool. trimmed the vid Jay trimmed the service down to where it's just Stacy's interview and then the message. Yeah. Think, so I'll so. put the the link goes, is on the weekly wave. You'll you'll see it. So yeah, please go back and watch that if you weren't able to see it because we definitely want everybody to hear that message it was awesome but there are two dates before we get into anything more right. that I want you to have on your calendar a more explanation could be later but the first date is June 13th it's right. a Tuesday night Tuesday. it's gonna be our summer celebration for the South we want every man woman and child to be there it's gonna be in the park so it's gonna be outside it's gonna be fun but it's a little different from your normal schedule that's why we're gonna probably say this every single week make right. sure that you put that on your calendar yeah and the second one is our annual now it's kind of become annual yeah. our annual family camp where yes. we sort of start off the fall festival season and that is going to be, I think it's the last week of it's, weekend of September. It's September 22nd through the 24th. There you go. September 22nd through the 24th. I didn't couldn't even do my part of the job right. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Those two dates. Make yeah. sure. Get your calendar out. But Press we, pause. Write it in your calendar. We celebrate Sukkot together, and it's just a great time to get to know one another and really be family. It's funny. We were even having a talk just last week with somebody who was like, oh, yeah, I love getting to see like this certain couple. The only time we see them is at family camp, but we feel so close to them because we play <laughs> games together and we love them. And, uh, it so goes a long way. There's great relationships that can be Amen. built over this weekend. And I really want to invite you to consider it. If you haven't considered it before, I want to invite no, you to consider it. You will year. love it. Absolutely. You it's will be love good. it. So, but you know, these, uh, even as we're talking about the summer celebration, reason that that is important is because it is starting our entire summer, um, our summer plan that we have for the South. And we're really excited about this plan. So yeah. uh, we talked about it in last week's practice video. If you haven't watched last week's practice yeah, video, please go, go back, back and watch <laughs> that. Um, and at the people in your group too, make sure that they have gone back and watched it. Yeah. And if you have friends that are not in groups, please make sure that they go back and watch it because people are in the South that are not connected with a group right now. I know they're trying to figure out, well, what does this mean for us? So, you know, make sure that they're watching it. So at least that they're keeping up with, you know, what, what we're doing and what we're thinking and how that's exactly. going. But our plan for the summer is that we're going to really be um, looking for where the spirit is moving us and leading us and guiding us. Um, we're going to have some holy disruption of our normal routine and our normal schedule. So um, <laughs> instead of meeting at the building on Sunday morning, um, we're actually going to be meeting by small groups on Sundays. And then instead of our small groups during the week, we're gonna have midweeks where we come together on Tuesday nights, either the men or the women. Um, and we're gonna disrupt our schedule and our, you know, kind of our habits and rituals that way so that we can become more attuned to where the Spirit is leading us. We're really praying that by getting out into our neighborhoods and our communities on Sundays, it will give us a different uh, possibility and different way of connecting with the, the people around us, a different way to invite people to join us, mm -hmm. a different way to, to just observe what's happening in the world around us. Mm -hmm. And But we're, we're doing this not just because, oh, let's do something different for the summer. We're doing it because we want to be able to follow the Spirit and we want the Spirit to lead us and we want to become really attentive to what the Spirit is doing and where He is moving. Yes. So, you know, we're, we, we have something with the practice today that we're, that we're going to kind of ask all of us to do as we prepare for that um, but uh, we, we to help us kind of you know get our mindset for that we wanted to go into John chapter 20 and we wanted to talk about um, this uh, when one of these uh, stories that happens between the time when Jesus was resurrected and then the time when he ascended and Pentecost came so over these next four practice videos before we have um, uh, Shavuot, we're going to be talking about these things that happened in that time. So we're really kind of excited about that, yes, right? It's going to be awesome. Embrace the change. Embrace the change. <laughs> so we can do it. In John chapter 20 and verse 19, we see this story that happened, which is, uh, a, it's, it's actually a really interesting passage and it's not one that gets preached on 
a lot um, for reasons that will probably become obvious as, as we talk about it a little bit here. Um, it's There's some things in there that are kind of like make you go, huh, that's interesting. And you, it brings up a lot of questions that are not always easily answerable. So let's go through it and see if we can find some of these questions and then see what kind of things that we learn from this. So John chapter 20, verse 19 says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands inside. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. All right, so do any questions come to mind um, right away when What when are the problems this with this what, passage? What are the problems with this passage? <laughs> right. Um, uh, well, first of all, what does that mean that he breathed the Holy Spirit right. on them? Right. I thought the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. It Right, it right. did. Uh, yes, it did. But then in this moment, he's breathing the Holy Spirit on them. Mm -hmm. So is that different than the Holy Spirit that came at Pentecost? And what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, something else that is kind of odd about this passage is that he says, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. But if you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. Mm -hmm. what? what? This, I mean, this is really weird, you know. So this is one of those times where this is a, a passage in the Bible that seems to go against our theology. Yes, you know, right. with the with, with the theology and the doctrine that we have in our church heritage and church culture, it doesn't really line up with this passage that that we are seeing here. So, what do you do with that? You know, how how do you process that? What what do you do with something like that in your mind? You know, we don't really have a theology for um, someone being able, you know, someone on earth being able to forgive someone else's sins. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, it, it's an interesting thing to be able to think about that. And we teach very strongly that you get the Spirit at baptism, which is why you need to get baptized, because that's one of the things that happens is you get the gift of the Holy Spirit then. And so, you know, you, you look at this passage, so why, why would this be in there? And, you know, because there's, there's a thought in there that like, well, this was just the apostles. Um, that's one way of looking at it. And this is, this was, he was breathing the Holy Spirit only on the apostles in this moment. And he was giving the apostles that ability and authority to forgive sins on earth. Um, but then comes the question, well then, but then why is it in there and why do we need to know that, that that's what the apostles had in that moment? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of interesting questions that come from this. There's a lot of commentaries that you can read. What kind of stuff do you I've read? I've read a lot of commentaries. Yeah. Well, I think the one thing is it helped me to understand where the Catholic stance on absolution and going to a priest to mm -hmm. confess your sins came from. Right. They, they do trace that, that origin back to here. Some people, you know, a lot of the conversation in these commentaries was really trying to figure out what are the parallel passages right where did this actually happen in time and you know trying to feel, figure out the difference between there's an obvious difference to everyone not just us that there was something different happening in acts 2 than was happening right here right but you know they can't figure out what that difference is but it's and really that, interesting and that's one of the hard things too when you when you try to harmonize all of the gospels um, which means when you try to make every piece of each gospel fit together in one narrative and like, oh, well, this happened exactly here and this happened exactly here. And, um, that, that becomes difficult because even the way that the gospels were written, the literature of the time um, when, when the gospels were being written, it, it's a very different approach than, than what we have today. We, we want things to be more like a very clear news article that gives us all of the facts and lays things out in chronological order, especially when it comes to something so important as our salvation. You know, that, that's what we're really looking for. Wait, how, what does this look like? What is the blueprint for this? But the ancient writings, there, there, there were different reasons that they included things in their writings and to adjust the chronology of something wasn't seen as anything misleading or deceitful. It was seen as that it's, it's trying to lay out the theme uh, you know, to talk about the theme, you know, that the, that the writer was attempting to communicate. And so the, the order of events would be basically kind of going by theme at, at certain times with, with some, of the, some of the Gospels, with a few of them. 
And so, you know, even as I looked at this, I was like, well, you know, this is John. This, it kind of is John wrapping up the whole idea of Jesus saying, now go make disciples. You know, because we see the Great Commission in Matthew 28. Uh, we see it in, um, we, we see it at the end of Mark. Uh, we see another one kind of at the end of Luke and in the beginning of Acts. But John's, John didn't have that so clearly. And this was the way that John was wrapping all of that up. At the end of the day, Jesus is resurrected and now he is sending his apostles out. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Um, you know, and so you, you, you see some of these things with the, with the different, uh, you know, the, the different way that these books are written kind of coming together. Yeah, and you don't have to harmonize them. No, you don't. Um, and, and, and actually, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> that was one of the things that I learned in my, in my master's program this year is like, yeah, harmonizing them is not really the way that they were. They weren't written that way, and they weren't meant to be harmonized in that way. And so it's not always helpful to be able to do that. You know, something else about this passage, though, is that it challenges what could be our doctrinal arrogance, and it really teaches us to have some doctrinal humility. Yes. Um, because we, we, can, we can try to explain, oh, well, this must have meant, uh, if they, when they said, well, uh, you know, you can forgive anyone's sins, that must have only been for the apostles. It doesn't say that that was only for the apostles. That's one possible explanation, but we don't know exactly what that meant. Um, and so we have to be able to approach scriptures like this with a humility, understanding like, I don't always know um, what, what is going on. And just because I have my systematic theology and my doctrine doesn't mean that I, then I can apply that to the scriptures that I read. We have to start with the scriptures and then try to build our understanding and our theology from that. Yeah. You know, I mean, many churches, I mean, it's just all, we, we can all fall prey so easily um, to doctrinal arrogance. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I think passages like this help us to go, yeah, you know what? I'm not really sure. There's a great mystery. There's, there's a great mystery <laughs> that, that's this. what I was going to say, you know, because we, we do have to be humble. But the other thing is just remembering that the, there's a, just a great mystery and wonder about God and mm. his word. You know, it's not going to be a formula, says the formula girl. I love formulas. I love right. puzzles. I love everything to fit together. Right. But, you know, there is a mystery and a wonder that we'll never know. There are times when, you know, God tells one prophet, I, you know, that I, the Lord, do not change. But he tells another prophet, that, or he tells somebody else, I, I changed my mind. Right. So, you know, these are, these are great mysteries and wonders, and we can look at them that way. Right. Yeah. So when we do look at this passage, what are some things that, that we can um, right. extrapolate from it? What are some things that we can take from it? Well, first of all, I think that those who were in that room on that first day were probably freaked out a little bit. They were scared. They were scared, <laughs> right? They were having this moment sure. of like they had just seen the, the Roman oppressive authoritative government um, brutally murder uh, Jesus, who they believed was the Messiah. And that was under the uh whatever direction right. of the religious leaders right the influence so, of the, the exactly. religious leaders so so the, the government's against them the their jewish leaders against are against them, against them. right wow. and so what and what what's going to happen to them you know and so for fear of those jewish leaders they're they're huddled in this room they're afraid they're scared and then jesus shows up and he's like no it's okay i am here you know um something else that 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 we can get uh, that we can kind of extrapolate from this is that um, Jesus gave them what they needed when they needed it. Right. You know, I, I, I like imagining this where he says, um, he breathes the Holy Spirit on them. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you, and now I'm going to breathe the Holy Spirit on you. Mm -hmm. Now, this wasn't maybe the spirit that came at Pentecost, but maybe it was the spirit that they needed to get them through that next 50 uh, days. Yes. Yeah. It was the ability, it yeah. was the strength that they needed to be able to see things through spiritual eyes and start to understand the scriptures. You remember how in, before in Luke, at the end of Luke, he would open up their minds so they could understand the scriptures. And so, you know, maybe this was him being able to say, I'm going to give you what you need in that moment or in this moment so that you can get through this difficult time that is going to come until the day of Pentecost and right. the outpouring of this. It's really... 40 days is a long time, or 50 days. It was right. going to be 50 days. It's a long time. It's a long time. You ever try to do something for 40 days? For two every weeks? year. Every year, I, I go, I'm going to do Lent. Okay. I always do that every year. And 
it's just amazing how long it's it is. So long. It's so hard for me to keep something up for that long. Right. So I do think about that, like what, how um, unsettling it probably was to live during in between these two events, mm -hmm. and they probably did need it. You right. Know? I think that that, and that is something that um, I read in some of the commentaries. They would talk mm -hmm. about, you know, that Jesus giving the Spirit to get them through that time period. I've heard right. people say that. Yeah, yeah. And then also just, uh, we see clearly here, he's saying, I am sending you. As right. the Father sent me, I am sending you. Now they didn't f fully know what that meant, but we know that this had happened before. Um, right. You know, we have Luke 10, which is where he sent out the 72. And even before that in Luke, where he sent out just the 12. Um, but, you know, he, he would have these moments where he would send his disciples out. And so here he's, this is like building up to like the great commission, like this sending. But this moment of, I am sending you. I've prepared you for all of this. And now I'm going to send you out into it. You know, when he sent out the 72, also... They did have the spirit because they were able to do all these miraculous things. Even right. the demons submitted in Jesus' name. Right. So we know they had some sort of power that had been given to them even right. back then. You know. Right. So you know the idea here is um, that I want us to get for the South is that as we're thinking about going into the summer, that we have what we need. Amen. You know, Jesus yes. gave them the spirit that they needed. Um, and they didn't understand everything and they didn't foot the church hadn't started yet, but he gave them what they needed for that moment. Yeah. And so for us in the South, this is, I want us to start looking to the spirit for that going, God has given me everything that we need. God has given us in the South, everything that we need to be able to follow him. And he is sending us, right? He is sending us out this summer to be able to meet people and to be able to share the love of God with them. He is sending us out this summer to meet the people in our neighborhood who are maybe discouraged because of experiences that they have had with churches or with religion. He's sending us out into our neighborhoods to find the people who are having challenges in their marriages or their family and need somebody just to talk to that, would, that could listen to them and help mm -hmm. them. Right. But what's so cool about that is the Spirit's already working in them. Yeah. So somebody, the, the people that are around us, the spirit has already gone before us and he's already working in these people's lives. So it's not like we have to drum them up. We just have to see who does the spirit put in our path. Right. You know, it's really, it's, this summer is going to be so cool because it's a chance for us to experience what we know in our head. That is that we have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Yep. Like we have this very powerful spirit. You know, we have everything we need for life and godliness. Mm -hmm. We have everything we need. But knowing that and, you know, knowing that in our heads, but living it is two different things. Absolutely. So we have what we need. We have the spirit to guide us. And now we need to look for where he is sending us. Yes. And so this is what um, these next few weeks that we really want to start to talk about and, and really start to implement this, this posture for all of us of looking to the Spirit for where He's going to send us. You know, last week in our practice video, we, you know, we left you with, you know, talk with your group about, you know, where could we meet? How could we meet? But then even specifically, like, how can we slow down? How can right. we simplify? How do we not make this like super um, complicated? but we just look for ways where God is going to take us. So we have one month until our summer kickoff. So that's gonna be on June 18th will be our first Sunday. June 13th is our summer celebration and then that following Sunday will be uh, the first time that we're having our small groups meet together. And um, I really want us to be praying for that. I, I don't think that, um, that our uh, brilliant strategic <laughs> logistical planning is going to be no. what gets us to a place of spiritual success. No, it's, uh, not. It, it's not. It's not going to be the plan. It's not going to be the organization. It's not going to be any any of that. Um, what is going to really help us to honor God and glorify Him is if we start with prayer, and if if we start with looking to Him for where does He want us to go? Where is He sending us? Right. You know, we, we, I would love to, I would really love us, honestly, to be at a point where, um, with the South, that, that we could have like a 40 hour a week prayer chain going on. 
where right. there was somebody that was praying specifically for all everything that's happening in the South and all of our Bible studies and the different groups and the different things, you know, for 40 hours a week or even 24 hours a day. You know, I mean, that's, okay, that's, I know I'm thinking big, but, you know, I mean, like what, just what, what, what if we could, what if we could develop the character and heart within the South that what we really believed in was the power of prayer yeah. and that we would that's dedicate ourselves start. to that. You know, I mean, I think about even the apostles in Acts wanting to dedicate themselves to the ministry of word and to prayer. And like, what if that was really our spirit within our group is the first thing that we're going to do. And the most important thing that we're always going to do is to pray. Right. So, but let's start with, uh, let's start <laughs> ramping up. Uh, yes. you know, so let, maybe by, maybe by the time we kick off the summer, we'll be at our 40 hour prayer week. Right. Maybe. Right. Yeah. 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 But we're not quite there yet. So this week, here's what we would love to suggest and ask you to do this week. Yes. And that is um, and is for everyone in the South. Like if, if you feel like the South is my spiritual home, this is my family, then what we want to ask you to do is to join us by setting aside 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. to specifically pray that the Spirit will send out the people in your small group. Right. So... The, the focus is on praying for the Spirit to send your group and the people in your small group to where He wants them to be. Mm -hmm. Now, this is different than praying for, you know, I mean, we've had times, you know, you, you'll get down and you'll intercessory prayer where you're praying for the people in your group. You know what they're dealing with. You know their health issues. You know right. their family issues. You know yeah. their job issues. Right. Um, and you can pray. For, and you should be praying for those things. Absolutely, right. we should be praying for one another. What we're asking for is 10 minutes where you... You know, aside from those other types of prayers, you spend 10 minutes praying for the Spirit to send your group. Mm -hmm. That God send us where we need to be. God sent, let the Spirit move us into the right place in the park to meet the people that we need to meet. Or send us in and down, you know, to take a walk in our neighborhood at just the right time that we're going to meet the person who has been praying for someone to come into their life and help them. You know, you can pray specifically for people's eyes to be open to what the Spirit is doing or their ears to be open, that God would open their eyes or open their mm -hmm. ears to what their Spirit is doing around them. You know, something I've been experimenting with a lot lately is I'll, I'll do breath prayers for mm -hmm. people. So I'll spend my time just breathing in one thing and breathing out something else. In this situation, we could breathe in, you know, uh, send the Vescovies with your, and breathe out with your Spirit or send the pains and breathe out with your Spirit. So that each one of each one of us is being prayed for. Right. That each one of us would be more in touch with the Spirit because we have the entire group right. is praying for us right. to be more in step with the Spirit. Right. I mean, what could that do? Oh, I know. Yeah, it's it could so be good. so amazing. It's so good. So this is what we're asking for: ten minutes a day that you pray for every person in your group to be led by the Spirit to where He wants us to go this summer. So would you join us in that? You know, so 10 minutes. And so maybe you can find a partner, somebody else in your group, and you you have a set time of day that you get on the phone with them and you both pray together, or you take a walk and you pray together, or you, with your spouse, you do that. But just um, we're just asking for 10 minutes um, this week that, that we can start really kind of covering our, this, everything that we're trying to do with the South, that we're covering it with prayer, that God will be leading us and guiding us. And this won't be our own plans and efforts, but it will really be the Spirit uh, you know, leading us as Jesus has sent us. Exactly. Out. You can even just put a reminder on your phone. Yeah. So that you just remember to do it every day. Because this is only our our ramp up for week one, week right? One, right? We want to get to the point where we can actually do this, you know, for an hour or something. So 10 minutes, right? A lot of prayer. But that's it for this week. Um, uh, you know, we're excited about all that is coming up in the next few weeks. So just please be praying about it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything else, just email us, let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear. And uh, we're really excited about all that God is going to do with us, in us, and through us yes. this summer. So love you guys. Have a great week.